The Chinese have one of the greatest civilizations in history, and their ancient culinary delights are no different. Since ancient times, the Chinese have focused on delicious foods that support a healthy lifestyle and increase longevity. Many of today's Chinese dishes have their roots in history and have only been modified to suit modern tastes. So in today's page in history, we will look into what the people in ancient China ate. Noodles rank among the oldest dishes enjoyed in ancient China as demonstrated by a 2002 archaeological expedition at the Lajia archaeological site in Qinghai province, which unearthed a bowl of noodles that dates back to 5000 BC. Made from brew corn and foxtail millet, the bowl of noodles was probably part of the Trijia culture, which flourished in the early Bronze Age. During the Western Han Dynasty, which lasted from 1045 to 77 BC, the government sought a quick and easy meal that will nourish its troops as they waged war against their enemies. This caused them to invent their version of noodles known as Lao Mian, made of millet flour mixed with buckwheat flour and pea flour. This was easy to transport and store, and it served the dietary needs of the military as well. The delicacy spread countrywide during the Eastern Han Dynasty, 25 to 220 AD, as scores of people latched onto it. But it wasn't until the Song Dynasty that the food became so popular and economically viable that noodle shops were open all day and night. Today, noodles have transcended the borders of China and are enjoyed throughout Asia, the United States, Africa, and some parts of Europe. Next is millet, which archaeologists trace back to 4500 BC when the grain grew wildly across the plains of China. Millet has long been at the core of Chinese folklore and religion, as illustrated in an oral epic poem titled Heian Juan, meaning Story of Chaos, from the Shenongjia region of Hebei province. In the epic poem, the Chinese cultural hero Shen Nong, whose name means divine farmer, embarked on a mission to secure the sacred five grains, which would become the staple of Chinese agriculture. The poem described how Shen Nong climbed Mount Yangtu and combed through the rocks until he found the millet seed and gave it to Jujube, the Chinese date tree. Later, Shen Nong took the seed and planted it eight times until it finally fruited and handed it over to humans for their daily meal. Though China has cultivated and fed on millet since the Stone Age, it has definitely become less popular ever since the introduction of the next meal, rice. Interestingly, rice did not originate from China, though the country is widely acknowledged as the largest producer. China's love affair with rice began around 3000 BC, and like millet, it has always been an integral part of the culture and religion of the people. According to the poem, Heian Juan, rice was the second seed to be found by Shen Nong when he journeyed to Mount Daliang in the province of Sichuan. After searching for the seed for a while, he found it hiding among the blades of grass and gave it to the willow tree for safekeeping. Later, he made a paddy field and planted the seed about seven times before the plants shot up and produced grains. Once they were ready for harvest, Shen Nong handed over the food to humans, who showed their gratitude by consuming it religiously. Soon, the Chinese brewed wine from rice, making it one of the first countries to discover the alcoholic drink. Existing records indicate that the Chinese started consuming rice wine as far back as 770 BC, but it was popularized during the Qing Dynasty by the deliberate efforts of state councillors who fell in love with the drink and recommended it to their subjects. In no time, rice wine became the official drink of the dynasty, and no national festival or banquet was held without it. Once wheat was discovered, the Chinese started coming up with creative ways of using the seed. And the result? The delectable bread Xiaobing. Historians trace Xiaobing to the period of the Eastern Han military general Ban Chao, who brought it from the western regions, including far west China and Central Asia. Considering that Ban Chao lived between 32 CE and 102 CE, we can confidently place the bread within that period. The food was originally known as Hu Bing, meaning barbarian pastry, and was a flatbread baked in clay ovens with no stuffings and comes in three different varieties, the Huang Chiao, Zhou Kun, and Ma Gao, but all are later developments and are associated with specific cities and cultures. To this day, Xiaobing remains a popular pastry in all of China, especially in the north. One food that predates the Xiaobing is Adzuki beans. The beans used to grow in the wild in East Asia around 50,000 years ago. 
till the Chinese domesticated them around 3000 BC. It is one of the five grains that Shen Nong, the divine farmer, gifted the Chinese after he found the seed on a mountain. Unlike the other grains, the adzuki bean was easy to plant and yielded a bountiful harvest in no time. Today, the Chinese are the leading producers of the beans, which are also grown on a large scale in the US. When it came to fruits, the ancient Chinese were spoiled for choice as the landscape was suitable for cultivating all kinds of nutty and fleshy fruits. According to ancient Chinese literature, red bayberries have been in China for at least 2,000 years. The Chinese jujube, also known as the red date, dates all the way back to 9000 BC, while the calabash fruit, referred to as the bottle gourd, goes back to around 7000 BC. Historical documents also reveal that the Chinese ate other fruits like peaches, plums, apricots, melons, pears and chestnuts during the Han period. When it came to vegetables, ancient Chinese loved taro, cucumber and soybean, which were present during the Neolithic period. Ancient Chinese literature, like the Analects of Confucius, written between 475 and 221 BC, mentions soybean while the soybean character Shu can be found on Chinese vessels that date to the Bronze Age. Later, the Chinese made tofu from soybean milk, which became a national delicacy and an alternative to meat products due to its high protein content. For over 2,000 years, the Chinese consumed tofu, and during the early years, only the wealthy could afford it. However, a national law ensured that the poor would get one cup of free tofu every week to help them meet their dietary needs. Though the tofu law helped the poor, the ancient Chinese still loved their meat, which they derived from ducks, pork, chicken, mutton and beef. The oldest meat product consumed by the Chinese is pork, which is native to China and goes as far back as 4000 BC. Beef was not particularly native to China and only reached the country around 3000 BC. However, these were not the only sources of protein for the Chinese, as those who lived by rivers and lakes enjoyed their meals with fish and turtles, while forest and grassland dwellers ate pheasants, sika deer, owls and bamboo partridges. Religious Chinese, like the Buddhists, stayed away from meat and turned to tofu for their protein needs. The Xi'an Bei, an ancient Mongolian nomadic tribe, introduced dairy products like yogurt and goat meat to northern China during the northern and southern dynasties. At the time, mutton and goat milk became popular, but by the time the Song dynasty came around in 929 AD, the Chinese in the north interestingly developed an aversion to dairy products and stopped consuming them altogether. How can we not talk about tea when it comes to Chinese cuisine? The Chinese developed an interest in tea which soon became synonymous with the nation. The origin of tea goes back to 2737 BC after a story from the period named the Chinese Emperor Shen Nung as the one who discovered the beverage. According to the legend, the emperor discovered the world's number one beverage when some leaves from the Camellia sinensis tree fell into water that his servant was boiling. Being a popular herbalist, the emperor decided to taste the new concoction that has just formed, and to his surprise, it was better than he had envisaged. Though the truth of this story is difficult to ascertain, tea containers discovered in several tombs across China date back to the Han Dynasty. The Tang Dynasty, which governed China from 618 to 906 AD, made tea the national drink, and before long the beverage made its way to Japan, Holland, England and the rest of the world. Ancient Chinese cuisine was as diverse as its people, and was integral to their social and religious life. Families, friends and entire communities bonded over these delicacies and passed them down to the present generation who still enjoy them. And that's all for today's page in history. If you enjoyed it, then give us a like and subscribe to this channel for more history lessons.